I want to look at a very basic cascaded system and look at a cascaded system of two simple discrete um, transfer functions, impulse responses, looking at for an input system x going to y, sort of an intermediate node here, maybe x1 that goes to y, and I could ask those questions. But it, I would have is I want to use this as an opportunity to say, okay, here are some basic structures and kind of walk through a number of things that are basics of uh, what we see uh, in, in digital signal processing concepts. In particular, trying to get a sense of what is both the convolution aspects, what is sort of the, the joint blocks, putting that together, what do I get in terms of the Z transforms, and what do I see in terms of frequency response. And sometimes people may talk about frequency response, the frequency response as a discrete time Fourier transform. All of it's about the same thing. And just to kind of get a sense of how this all gets put together. Okay. So when you begin to look at this, you have an X to a Y. Uh, you have a very interesting uh, sort of two blocks, H1 and H2. But we know that those two blocks are, in fact, two linear systems, are a linear system to itself. And in fact, we know that this H is going to be just the convolution of the two things. Cool. So imagine I have H1 is equal to this particular uh, structure, just the difference of two um, delta functions, right, as its impulse response. The other one is the sum of the two. It's actually straightforward to see what the frequency response of the two would be. It's a, a 1 minus 1, or e to the j omega, and a 1 plus. Great. Uh, works out straightforward. Now you could say, well, what is the transfer function of H? Well, one way to approach it is just convolve them. I take the two of them, convolve H1 and H2. Um, in fact, you might go and build a small um, sort of thing, look at delta of n, delta n minus 1, sum everything up, and what you get is that, oh, look, my H of n is delta of n minus delta of n minus 2. Okay. Um, very straightforward kind of approach where we're able to put, you know, these two and then these two are negative of it because that relates to the second part of the delta and we go from there. Remember that the convolution of two delta functions is a delta function in discrete time just with a combination of delays. So it all just works out really well. Okay, great. I also know that the transfer function for z in the z domain is the same is going to be related to the product of the two. Well, the, the, for the z domain for the first one is one, or for the second one is one plus z to the minus one, and for the second, for the first one is one minus z to the minus one. This is a fair, straightforward multiplication, right? So now it's one minus z to the minus two. And you're like, huh, that's cool, because then when I actually did the straight convolution, I get the same thing, because if I invert that, I know that's going to be a delay of two, this is just going to be the signal there. And I get exactly the right response. Yay! Okay, we're good. So, that's consistent. The other thing I could imagine is the frequency response is interesting for h1 omega hat and h2 omega hat. Well, I know what those two pieces are, and I can just multiply them together. I get 1 minus e to the minus 2j omega hat. That's not shocking, because that would be very consistent with this z transform as well. And then I could simply... Look at this. Now, if I sort of pull e to the minus j omega out, I'm going to get a plus and minus. That gives me a sine. So that gives me a, there's a 2j and then a sine omega hat. Cool. And then I can definitely see where my magnitude, my phase, well, actually the 2 is part of the magnitude as well, but you get the point, that I can definitely look at the frequency response. The other thing I notice, and it pops out very quickly from the z side, although I can see it from the frequency side as well, is I have two zeros in the combined structure. So in the, in the first one, H1, I'm going to have one zero at basically at, you know, basically at, at z, uh, z minus one equal to one. The other one I'm going to have it as when it equals to minus one. And so that's where the two of them would be. Well, when I multiply the two of them together, it's no surprise that I'm going to get both of them. I get both zeros because they both kind of come into this product um, formulation which then I can then figure out where is it in the frequency domain, because this is often where we will see it, right? Uh, is if it shows up in, in, the, in the omega hat, well, in fact, here I will see, well, you know, omega hat equal to one, so omega equal to zero is one of the zeros, and omega equal to pi is the other one. Well, what happens when we plot the frequency responses? Well, when I plot the frequency response with the first one, 
I do get a zero at zero. And I'll make it make a hat equal zero. No surprise. And everything then goes up towards two at the at the two sides. If I look at it for the second one, I get a zero at pi, but then it's you know, no then it's fairly a two at sort of the middle. Now if you think about it, the first one is the first one here is really a high pass, which is exactly what we see here. And the second one looks like a low pass. Again, no surprise to that. What happens when I multiply a high pass and a low pass? Well, I often get something that looks like a band pass. One of the things happening is I get a zero at zero and at pi. This is cool, so I get both of them. Um, I also then get a p sort of the middle, which is interesting because it's right at sort of pi over, it's right at the pi over two point and minus pi over two point. And that gives me a gain of two at that point. Interestingly enough, if I look at the two pieces, it's a one plus j and a one minus j um, is what I end up getting for those, those parts. And so when I multiply it together, I, um, it, it works out to give me two. And so this is a good system. But it, I wanted to put all of this in one place for a simple example so you can see where all the ties and the connections occur for this kind of a system.